Okay, we are in Kentucky at the closing. It's a great big long table. Usually it's going to be something like this. Closing statement seems to be a little off, but hopefully we'll get a get it done here very quick. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, we've got a closing coming up in three days on December 20th. Fingers crossed. So I thought this would be a good time to share some knowledge if you're looking to buy land or sell land at some of the hidden costs that usually catch people by surprise. And even us, we've done it so many times and yet you're like, well, what's this fee? What's that fee and what's that cost? So I don't know how many I'm gonna actually hit if it's five, seven or four, but I'll rattle them off as we go and I'll give you some reference. So let's get started. So anytime you buy and sell land, there's a bunch of things that sneak up on you. So one of the costs that people don't always take into consideration is taxes. So taxes are usually prorated between you know the day you sell. Some states you pay taxes forward, some states you pay taxes backwards, some pay like half up front and then you could have a deferred half payment. Uh, some block it into like six months and six months while others give you the whole tax bill all at once and you don't have a choice. And it doesn't matter, it seems like we're always paying the taxes. Whether we're buying or selling, it seems like we hardly ever get on the credit end. But taxes have to be accounted for and that's usually another fee, uh, depending on if you're on the buying or selling side. Another one is just all of the fees that keep getting wrapped up. You know, you got your title fees, you got your search fees, you got your attorney fees. Of course, you got your real estate commission, but the lines just go pop, 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 pop. pop. You know, with 200, 300, 150, 400, and them fees usually add up. If I remember right, uh, I was over $2,000 just on miscellaneous fees for this closing coming up that we got. Um, like I said, they just pile up fees, and all of a sudden you're into it for a thousand, twelve hundred, eighteen, two thousand, whatever. It's like, dang, on it. I mean, everyone has to get paid. It's a process. I mean, it's a big deal transferring property from one person to another legally. You know, you got your title policy, which supposedly guarantees clean title. That's a whole nother topic if it actually does any good or not. Uh, another fee that people don't expect is your transfer tax. Uh, not every state has it, I don't believe, but I know we got it in Illinois, and it's usually... It's usually like 1%, you know, or 1.5% of the whole thing, but that can add up. You know, if you're buying a $400,000, $500,000 chunk of ground, you're going to pay tax. Just the initial transfer. That's why it's called a transfer tax. Just for taking it from me to you or vice versa, you're going to pay 1 or 1.5%, and that's going to add up to thousands of dollars. Uh, another another hidden one might be especially with land if there is a home if there's a, a fuel tank proration you know if you got a 500 or a thousand gallon LP tank um, usually you prorate that sometimes it's in the closing sometimes you got to write a check on the side but you know if I just filled my LP tank and it cost me you know five six hundred dollars and I'm selling you it with a full tank I'd like to get that recoup because I'll never use it I mentioned the title policy that's usually another pretty hefty cost it, it goes by like how valuable the loan is they usually craft a title policy to like your mortgage amount so your bank is quote covered um, you know that can run from a thousand to two thousand dollars and I believe the seller has to usually pay for that and, and give a title policy to the new buyers. Another one of my favorites, usually on the buying side, is a loan origination fee. Um, I mean, not only are you you're going to pay them interest on the loan, but a lot of banks, a lot of them have a loan origination fee, and some of them could be pretty hefty. Sometimes it's you know three to five hundred, but sometimes. Uh, they charge you a percentage if you want to try and buy a half percent lower on your mortgage well then you got to pay what's called points so let's say they offer you a seven and a half percent fixed mortgage uh, but you could pay a point and get it down to six and a half but a point is a, basically a percentage so if your loan is uh, uh, let's say 400,000 you pay one point uh, that's a substantial chunk of money um, 
that's I think four four thousand dollars one percent uh, and then that gets your rate down so then you got to calculate your mortgage over time on how long it'll take you to recoup that paying the mortgage down now some of this stuff you could negotiate uh, you could work with your bank and say hey you know can you nix the loan origination fee stuff like that if it's a local bank sometimes they will so you got your loan origination fee and then you got your paying points some of them are going to charge you at just part of their loan package a half a point anyway so it's just another tax basically as the buyer but it adds up i'm telling you you, you get your closing statement and you know say whatever you're selling it for a hundred thousand and it's actually costing you a hundred and six five you know or something like that and it's like dang gum it but everyone's got to get paid it's just the nature of the business so hopefully this helps you if you're buying or selling just my rule of thumb is that i always when i calculate in my head approximately what we're going to get or pay i always add several percent you know so if it's a three hundred thousand dollar transaction uh, i try to add round everything up so that at least I'm not surprised to the downside. If I am surprised, it's usually to our benefit. That's because I, I overestimate all the fees that are gonna come out of a loan, whether we're buying or selling. Fingers crossed our closing happens here before Christmas, which it should. It's been a long road. It's been a long year with Project 291, and we still got one chunk left to sell. Um, if you're new to the channel and you wanna watch that series, we documented the whole thing over the last year. Uh, it was about a 300 acre piece. We sold some chunks off of it. And we're down to, after this closing, we're down to one more chunk, 152 acres that is still for sale. So I hope to see you on a future video and best of luck, thanks. Okay, we are in Kentucky at the closing. It's a great big long table. Usually it's gonna be something like this. Uh, we're at an attorney's office and we're still working figures to try and come up with the uh, closing statement seems to be a little off, but hopefully we'll get a get it done here very quick. It's going back over here yeah. so that cash from them on that would be that and then cash from them on that would be that. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I hope. And and if it doesn't, another little side business we got to help out our clients, and we're gonna we're gonna plant some beans for Capper there on his new farm in Western Kentucky. Nice, uh, Clark. Yeah, you you might have to do a little work to get your spot now that we're putting beans in there. <laughs> All right, good deal. <laughs>